Welcome to this demo of JSON Studio. JSON Studio is a suite of applications for data access on MongoDB. Uh, today we'll demo the Dicer application and the Visor application. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the Studio. Um, what I provide are the credentials to the Mongo database. In this case I'm connecting to a database called Tweets. So I will log in. Once I'm logged in, uh, I have a choice of the different applications within the studio. So I'll go to the Dicer application. Dicer from the uh, term slice and dice because this application is built on top of the MongoDB aggregation framework and allows you to look at the data in various ways, slice and dice it, match it, group it, aggregate it, etc. Um, the first thing that I do is I pick a collection that I want to look at the data. I'm going to pick my World Bank collection. This is a collection that has a bunch of documents, each document describing a project that is currently being done by the World Bank. So for example, if you look at a, a document on the left hand side, you see uh, there's a project. Um, project is funding something in Ethiopia. You see it's, uh, it's investing in education, in public administration. Uh, it will say how much money is being spent, when it started, etc. So I have a bunch of documents in this collection, and maybe the first thing that I want to do is I want to know how many projects the World Bank is funding by country. Okay, So it's not a straight find or a straight query, but it's one that I need to group data together. So I'll go ahead and I'll create a new pipeline. A pipeline is a set of steps. Each step is usually some kind of a transformation on the data. And then I create stages. So a pipeline is comprised of a set of stages. So I'll hit the plus button. And maybe the first step or the first stage that I want to do is I want to group things by the country. So I'll click group. I'll give it some description uh, by country, just a string. Um, and once I'm in here, I have to define what grouping fields I have and what aggregate values I have. So in this case, I want to group by country. So I'll go ahead and double click on either Ethiopia or the field country short name, and it will add my um, specifier on what to group by. And the next thing I want to do is I want to create an aggregate value with an operator of sum. And what I want to do is I want to summarize or I want to sum up the amount of money being spent uh, so I'm going to look for my field. My field is a total amount, so I'll double-click total amount, and maybe I'll also add a counter. Um, so if I just do that, and I hit the play button, where I run the stage, then what will happen is on the right-hand side, I get my result set. So you can see I'm getting uh, the country Costa Rica has one project with a total of $2 billion. And um, if I scroll down, I can see that you know, some countries have uh, more money spent, more projects spent, etc. So maybe this isn't that convenient. Maybe what I want to do is sort this by the money spent descending. So that's another transformation. Uh, so, so I'll simply create another stage, and this stage will be a sort stage. And maybe I'll sort it by amount. And then I'll double click on what field I really want to sort on. So in this case, it's the sum total amount field and I'll click the descending button. Um, and I think that's it. So what I'll do is I'll uh, play every stage up until the stage, and I'll look again at my results, and I'll see that that's exactly what I wanted to get. I'm getting the country, total amount spent, and number of projects, but it's sorted by how much money is being spent in each one of these countries. And so you can see India has uh, the largest amount, has 16 projects, Brazil has 9 projects, Indonesia has 19 projects. And, you know, I can even go further. Suppose that, um, you know, I only wanted to see those countries that have uh, at least 10 projects to, in them. Okay, so this is kind of, if, you're, if you come from the relational world or the SQL world, that's kind of like a having clause. So again, I'll simply add another step. In this step, this is a filter step. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it over 10. And I'm going to pick the operator, which is greater than or equal to. And I'll double click on the count. 
and I'll put in the value. The value that I want is at least 10 projects. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll play it. And what I'll get is indeed only those countries that have over 10 projects to them. So that's a pretty good example of how easy it is to create uh, very sophisticated uh, queries and, and slice and dice data in MongoDB using the aggregation framework, but without writing any code. Now, the code is always available to you. If I click this button over here, what it'll show me is really the code that is required to run this using the aggregation framework. So really what the studio gives you is just a convenient way to build this code. The other thing that the studio gives you is really an entire visualization framework on top of this. So for example, you can hit a button and get uh, the default chart, uh, or you can go into the visualizer, and in the visualizer, you can really build anything that your heart desires in terms of graphics, right? So for example, I can say, uh, give me a pie chart, and in the pie chart, I want uh, each country to appear, and the slice in the pie should be the, the amount of money spent. So I get a pie chart, I can get a, a bar chart, I can get a column chart, anything, anything like that. Uh, plus, you know, I'll show you a few more advanced graphs, like. If I look at the chart types, you can see it has all the simple ones like, you know, lines and stacked and histograms and pies, etc. But it also has pretty sophisticated charting capabilities like parallel plots, scatter plots, tree maps. So as an example, this is what a scatter plot or a bubble plot would look like, where you plot uh, some x and y, y values, and each bubble has a bubble size. So in this case, I'm plotting that the size of the bubble is the population in different cities and I'm looking at, at population versus the number of zip codes so usually you would expect this to be on a straight line but for example Houston for whatever reason has a much higher number of zip codes compared to population so that's something that's very easy to see in a scatter plot or this is a this is a tree map where the size of each box is computed by some value that you define. Uh, so th in this case, this is a tree map that shows you the breakdown in the recent elections and which states in the US elections, uh, which states went uh, Democratic, which states went Republican, and if I, uh, and each one of these is a district. So I can either see this by the size of the district or by the count of the district. And if I want to see uh, you know, I want to drill down into New England, I'll drill down and I get uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. If I keep on drilling down, I get the different districts in Massachusetts. So that's another example. Uh, this is a sunburst, which shows the breakdown or the structure of the Virgin Empire. So Virgin is a conglomerate. There are all kinds of uh, sub-companies. So, for example, if I want to drill down and see what Virgin Limited, what uh, companies belong to Virgin Limited, I click here and I zoom in on Virgin Limited and see what brands are in Virgin Limited or see the entire empire. So, you know, very rich visualization capabilities, uh, which are, you know, go hand in hand with the ability to slice and dice information. And the slicing and dicing is even possible in a way that is parameterized. So let me give you an example of that. Um, suppose that I start with another collection. In this case, let me find this collection, the stocks collection. Okay, this is a collection of all the stocks in Dow, and I have a certain pipeline here, which I've done before, which is, let me run it, you'll see what it does. The first thing that it does is it does a filter on a certain sector, and then once in a certain sector, it counts by the industry type, okay, how many companies there are. So for example, right now, this is running on the healthcare sector, and the healthcare sector has one company listed under medical practitioners, 55 under medical instruments and supplies, etc., etc. But if you look closely, at this uh, match phase or this filter phase, you see that the first thing it does, it only picks out the stocks that are in a certain sector. 
But the way it does it, it uses a syntax called dollar dollar sec. But if you're familiar with Mongo, you know that the, really there is no such syntax in the matching stages of a pipeline. And so what this really is, is a parameter. And if I click on the bind parameters, you'll see that I have indeed bound a variable called sec. And the possible values are all these values. And right now, healthcare is the one. But if I ch change this to financials, for example, and rerun this, then you'll see that the pipeline is showing me a totally different result. And so that gives you the power of parameterization into uh, queries and aggregations that run on MongoDB. And this extends into the visualization framework as well. So for example, I could be here. I could have a pi. Let me build a quick pi where I take uh, the industry and I plot the number of companies in there. Okay, so you can see that in the financial uh, sector, there are a lot of exchange traded funds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if I go here and I rebind this to, say, uh, utilities and rerun the query, then I get something completely different based on utilities. Um, so thanks for joining today. This was a very quick demo of some of the functions in the Dicer and the Visor applications within JSON Studio, a suite of applications for data access on MongoDB. Thanks. Bye.